those are really the dark times of our lives and you know but looking back at it then i'm still grateful that happened to us because we, without experiencing those dark times we won't be able to find Today's podcast, we have uh, Ali Pineta and Rana Canada. Ali is uh, the founder and CEO of Strokes and Shapes, and he has an experience uh, in web design and development for more than eight years, I think. And Rana is a social media manager and a brand identity designer. Uh, she has a lot of experience and she's helping entrepreneurs with uh, social media challenges, etc. Uh, welcome to the podcast. Here. Thank you, Chris. Hello, Thank everyone. you. Thank you for having us. I'm happy that you are here because I think we are sharing a similar mission, similar goal this year um, with the mm -hmm. online education business. We're going to talk about this. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Do you want to let people know a little bit more about you? Okay. So hello, everyone. My name is Ali Pineda and I live in the country of Philippines. And I'm, you know, what Chris basically said is that I'm a website developer and designer for over eight years now. And just recently we started our company called Strokes and Shapes. And we're focusing on helping um, basically educators around the globe to, in their online education business. Awesome. Hi everyone, I am Erwana Jean Canyada. So you can call me Erwana Canyada or you know, my nickname is Twinkle. And um, I'm a social media manager and brand identity designer. So I'm working with Ali or we are partner in Strokes and Shapes. So I'm running our marketing for social media and graphics as well. Also, this is the first time I have a podcast with uh, two guests. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That's so awesome. yeah, you're the Thank first you. one to be. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm always starting the podcast with um, the same question, which is, what is mm -hmm. the distance from your destination? Meaning, what is your goal right now? Maybe it's business oriented, maybe it's personal, but what's your goal right now, and how far do you think you are uh, from getting there? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so first, business wise, um, we started. Uh, strokes and shapes with the goal to have a sustainable business um you know and we started it because we want to be really uh to be successful in the future to live a comfortable life not just me not just rowena but with our family as well you know not, not um, worrying about paying the bills you know things like that and and we really want to reach at least six figures so if we can reach that this year, I mean, thank you, right? Um, we're going to be very happy with that. I would say personal-wise, I just wanted to, again, um, have my family to live a comfortable life and you know, grow as a person as well. And what else? Um, how about you, Rowena? Goal for, for business. Um, I want to build a team for Strokes and Shapes. That's my ultimate goal. And for personal, I want to um, build my own skincare product. So, oh, okay. Yeah, on the side. <laughs> yeah. So uh, previously, we have a content creator, a uh, copywriter, but uh, we stopped for, for a while. I'm handling it because um, he's doing his own podcast and show. So, yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Some great goals. <laughs> and, uh, thank you how far thank do you, you think you are right now mm -hmm. to get there like let's say from zero to ten zero you have done nothing and ten you have achieved it where you will place yourself i would say we're in at least three now mm -hmm. i agree or even going for four mm -hmm. and uh um some people might think that that's very low but for us it's very high already and we're very happy because um, we know that we are on the right direction now compared to way, way back before, right? Me yeah. and Rowena were kind of like everywhere, you know what I mean, like generalized. But now we know what it is that we love to do and what Finally. we want to do. <laughs> yeah, it is. 
and that's why that three or you know going four it's mm-hmm. so high for us because you know like i said we're heading in the right direction we want to respect that you know progress looking back us mm-hmm. our before yeah yeah i love that you don't only move forward but you look back and you are um grateful for what you had that's awesome i think that the first numbers like getting to three it's the hardest part so if you are there then now you you know what to do mm. for the next steps you you just need to put on mm. the work so i think it's the first uh, steps are the more important so congratulations thank you thank you that's awesome um i wanted to ask you what's the um, let's start with uh, what's an online course for people that maybe don't are not familiar with that okay so like online course for us is an opportunity for other uh, aspiring people who wants to improve their skills or to have an additional skill set you know to help their life or career succeed yep mm-hmm. and yeah. i would say online course is um like what Rowena says is an opportunity, like a big opportunity, especially for people like us who live in the third uh, world country, right? Um, we don't have like a lot of access into education. For people that they don't know, you're in Philippines, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. And here in Philippines, it's not that in demand yet, the online education. So mm-hmm. we want oh. to be the first. So you have an opportunity. Agency. Yeah, we want to be the first academy or, you know, online mm-hmm. academy to introduce the online courses here in Philippines. That's awesome. That's really <laughs> great. I always loved uh, online education, uh, like way before, you know, uh, the lockdown and pandemic and everything. I was thinking that this is the way that at some point we're going to go because it's easier. You can do it in your own time. And mm-hmm. I think that the pandemic just speed things up <laughs> and made people mm-hmm. realize that. So for me, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What other um, uh, benefits you can find from online courses? Why someone should create one? Mm-hmm. So again, let's go with the business side of things. Um, why should someone create an online course? Uh, for their business uh, first would be like creating an online course um, you can greatly increase your uh, monthly revenue from that or even yearly revenue from that because um, especially when you charge like hundred dollars to hundred fifty dollars per per student for your course I mean that's already a big money especially for uh, for an example for the Philippines if you convert that let's say hundred dollars right it's uh, for us, it's a lot of money already. So that's one reason. And second would be once you've created an online course, you don't have to uh, create another course again. And you can use that continuously, right? And just improve it over time. So I think that's uh, one it's passive, of the... passive income. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And okay, so for the personal side, um, by creating an online course, uh, as the instructor yourself, you're going to be challenged uh, based on your knowledge on the topic mm. that you're teaching them. Like, do you really know what it is that you're talking about? Yeah. Right? I've experienced that firsthand. So, um, but once you get past that, you feel much more confident, much more knowledgeable. Like you feel like you've grown a lot. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I feel that too. Like. Like I know something, I think I know it, but when I'm trying to explain yeah. to someone else, I realize mm-hmm. that I don't really know it. So I need to study it more. That's really awesome. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good observation. That's very true. And last, uh, I would say the most important for us, uh, me and Rowena, is uh, the fulfillment of helping another person to better their lives. And I think for us, that's like the most uh, I don't know, um, the most important part of what we do, what, um, what makes us happy as well, you know, feeling fulfilled from that. Yeah, that's awesome. That's great. <laughs> um, I'm thinking that's also easier now to to do it, like, especially when it comes to gear, the gear is cheaper. Uh, a few years before, you couldn't, like, 
buy so easily and cheap uh, gear to film yourself and do online courses. I think, especially mm -hmm. if it's for businesses that will be investing on that, uh, now it's mm -hmm. easier to, to do that. So that's important. Yeah, that's very true. You, you don't have to kind of like spend like thousands and thousands of dollars to mm -hmm. start your online course. You can even start your online course just using your phone. Like there's so many ways right now and free applications as well. So, um, you know, I encourage uh, for everyone who's watching to you know, start their online course if they're um, interested in doing it for a very long time. I think it's a perfect time to build your online course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, especially now, right? Mm, especially now it's pandemic. People are always on their houses and they, you know, curious about other things. So it's perfect time to build your own online course. Yeah, totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, this is why you decide to start that, to specialize on that? Yeah, yeah for me, yes. I, I think it started during pandemic. We really, truly realized the importance of online education during this pandemic. I think it's, you know, online education for Strokes in Shape is, you know, um, the birth of pandemic. I can say. What's really funny though is that um, we've been already thinking about creating strokes and shapes even without the pandemic. It just so happens like, you know, it's kind of like they happen at the same time and the opportunity came to us, right? Um, I mean, I'm sorry that COVID happened, but we, me and Rowena were just looking on the positive side out of all the negativity that happened. And, and one of those is, you know, the booming of uh, the online course or online education. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally agree. So all the pieces came together. You already had it in your mind mm. and you know, mm -hmm. everything fall in place and you started. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really great. Um, how many years are you, you know, know each other working together? Um, oh man, I would say like four to five years. boyfriend, girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, four. Oh my God, Ali. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's I so think, many you don't um, even remember. Going five years. <laughs> yeah, I think going five years mm -hmm. this 2021, but working together as partner, um, going three years, love three years. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, we've experienced um, individual failures mm -hmm. and also, um, well, uh, as partners too, like we've so experienced so many failures, but. Looking back then, those failures, um, they helped, they shaped us on what we are right now. And it, I would say they lead us to the right direction, if to put it that way, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm asking because I'm thinking it's important to know when you know someone really well and you work together, it's kind of easier. Like <laughs> the other person know what you're thinking without saying it. It's uh, the collaboration, <laughs> it's, you know better mm -hmm. and i know one mm -hmm. of you is introvert and the other one is extrovert <laughs> oh yes can you guess who's the introvert and the ex extrovert i can guess you're like more minimal in white and ren is like uh, red fiery <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> you got that right uh, how does this affect work i mean do you use it in, a, in your advantage uh, <laughs> it's, it's it's messy like <laughs> For me, I, I mean, I'm a very like crazy. <laughs> I'm exaggerating things most of the time. So Ali is like my, what's the word of it? Like my boundaries, like mm -hmm. he always, you know, make me calm, calm. Cause I'm always hype, you know, hyper energetic. Like I want to do this right now. I want to do anything, but Always, Ali always said, you can't do anything in one day. I mean, you can't do everything in one day. So just calm yourself because I'm a very, you know, energetic person and I have a lot of ideas coming in. But at the end of the day, you know, I, I, I can't do anything. I can't do everything. So yeah, it's good to have a balance in relationship, in the business. And it's good that we're totally opposite. So someone can, you know, mm -hmm. um, make you calm or remind yeah. you 
<laughs> Ali has that easy. calm yeah. energy. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think I'm more like Ali, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I do need people like you to give me that boost to, you know, <laughs> do more oh, yeah. and, you know, push me a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. That's very true, especially, um, you know, on Ro- I, I believe Rowena's superpower is, you know, to connect to other people. Like, she's a people person. And for me, like an extreme introvert, right? I, I usually tend to stay away from people, right? But Rowena always encourages me to, um, you know, um, even just say hi to them, right? You know, greet them. And she, I would say she brings the, at least the extrovert side of me but you know it's, it's very small but at least there there is and if you can see our video from the past and you know for the future post as well you can see um our difference in the video like he's like in front and i'm at the back right so i think it's fun though to embrace those really great it can help each other that's awesome um i want to go back to the online courses uh i think because Rowena is more into branding and social media, where mm-hmm. where does those two come in? What's their role into the in the courses? I'm role branding and social media role is like uh, you're building your identity for your online courses as a mentor, as a coach, and you need to you know gain trust to other people. So branding is your identity, your your face, you know, um, it, that's some, some people want to know you and also you can boost your online presence and it's like building awareness as well. If you want to build your own online course, it's good to have a social media and branding because that some people can identify you that you're unique and, you know, they can trust you, like showing yourself to them showing what you you've got your your skills and what they can learn from you it's it's really um you know connected everything is connected from branding to your social media presence so let's say i'm a client where should Mm -hmm. i invest more on branding or marketing like branding versus marketing where should i put more of my money towards (laughs) i think for me i can say both 50 50 i'm not yeah, 50-50, I can say mm-hmm. both. Because uh, for me, branding is important and social media is important. So you need to, you know, work on the both side for me, for me. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. That's, my, that's my perspective because it's important to, you know, boost your, your, brand, your brand identity. It's also important to boost it on your social media. So it's good to have those. Agreed. <laughs> um, <laughs> about the courses, what will help someone that is starting out with their course make it more successful? Let's say I would definitely say um, before you even start creating your course, uh, I would like invest. Um, I would say not not a lot, but invest some of your time doing the research first and making sure that you know course that you want to create there's like an audience waiting for you because um, one of the biggest mistakes that i um, saw for from people who wants to create their online courses is they immediately jump into course creation without even finding out if um, there's an audience for their online course that they're creating if there's someone interested or not right so i think that's the most important um, step to take first is to do your own uh, research and make sure um, that the course that you're creating is, well, someone wants to buy that Mm. or someone's looking for that. Yeah, that's great because most people will forget about this one comes to create a course. It's going to be like, I do this, I'm good at this, let's do that. But you don't think if people need need that if they buy it. Mm When it comes to business, you're always thinking about your clients, but yeah, I'm guessing in online course, we forget yeah. about it, so. And I think it's, can I add something? I think it's mm-hmm. important also to, you know, make it clear and simple, your messaging or your um, title for the course. And, you know, uh, is if who is it for or 
what they can benefit for that course. I think it's good to have a clarity, clear messages for online courses that you want to create. Mm -hmm. That's great. I remember somewhere I saw, Rana, uh, you talked about uh, you help people with their social media challenges through empathy strategy. Mm, I want to ask yeah. what is empathy strategy? Yes. One of my friends asked me about that on LinkedIn and he, she's very curious. What is empathy strategy? Like they're not familiar about it. And I read it on uh, where, where HubSpot. HubSpot, I think it's from HubSpot. And then I said, I, I like the, I like the idea. I, I like the, you know, the, the, the strategy of um, empathy strategy. It's more of listening to your audience. Like I want to, this is what I said to my friend. I want to, I want to work with coaches or educators or more who are more people focused or who are like putting other people's, um, you know, um, interest or wants or needs so that's my empathy strategy using the through social media like i want to listen to them because um i think it's important to a coach or an educator to really listen to your audience not just you know doing you think you're doing but you're not listening to your audience you're not really monitoring you know what they want or what they need from you or what they really want to learn from you so that's why i want to build a empathy strategy that focuses on listening to your audience that's awesome um uh, thank you yeah because i feel like if you give me like journalistic uh, answers i'm i'm not i'm not going to feel that connected uh like mm -hmm. like you're not listening to me but if you mm -hmm. specifically tell me, you know, give me an advice about uh, specifically about me, I'm going to feel more, you know, I'm going to feel the I empathy. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I can example Chris though, like her, his empathy is really strong, right? So his students love him and adore him, you know, listening to him more. So yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I'm. I, you know, um, that's my goal to work with. As, that's awesome. You know, a coach, educator. Yeah. So are you going to get deeper in that? Like a coach? Yes. Um, actually, I have this event last uh, ne next week. I have this event coming up. It's about um, communication because I want to, as a social media manager, I need to, I want to dive deep on conversation intentional con communication so yeah so i'm a client i'm coming up to you to let's say create a website i also need social media for my online course what's the the number one question the most important question that it will give you the more info about me that's um that's a very tricky question right because there's so many good there questions so many. you can ask a client but um for me this is just my personal opinion i would say um the why right i mean why do you need a website why do you need a social media or for the online education right why are you creating this online course and the reason why why is the uh, most important question for me is i truly believe um if your why is strong like um no it's just not for something you know uh, just for you know, like for, let's say for the reason to just make money, right? Um, I think that's a very small why, but, f you know, for for example, like Chris though, his why is to teach like 1 billion people, right? Around the globe, like that's so huge, right? And I truly believe if the why is something like that, like th uh, there's a big reason behind it. I mean, the, the person is very good to work with and, you know, um, they're really motivated into creating uh, this work or this project that we're talking with him or her. Yeah, I agree. Because maybe if, you know, we will ask their why, 
what what are their why um, building their online courses we can you know we can feel that they're committed because of their why hmm. totally agree i think it's my favorite too asking why three <laughs> times yeah and of course um for me for social media i'm always asking is who is your target who is your target market who is your target niche because from there you can already you know know how to provide value first for your client mm -hmm. you know you can research so why and what is your target market or niche yeah totally agree so is there any on social media um misunderstanding let's say because for branding i guess um for branding most people will think like branding is your logo <laughs> is there any uh, similar thing in social media uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah of course <laughs> like um they're always you know putting their social media on the side like they're not focusing on their social media but if you want to be a mentor if you want to be an educator you really need to you know boost your online presence and because you know you're you're building online course so you, you need to be online you need to have your you know online presence so other people can can you can you know, have an opportunity to know you more, to trust you, to have an awareness about you, about your courses. So, yeah, that's what I'm looking as well for and for a client, you know, mm -hmm. having, knowing the importance of social media for them. Yeah, mm -hmm. I truly agree with Rowena too, because um, let's say Chris, you have the like the best, right? The best online course in the world. But if no one knows about it, I mean, mm -hmm. if you're neglecting, you, know, you won't have media. any student, right? Exactly. Yeah, and, and branding like the two, the, the, the two is very important. Like, you can never go with just one, you need those two to make it work. Mm, totally agree because like mm -hmm. I'm a client I have created the course you have created the website that's awesome now what <laughs> how do I bring people in <laughs> so mm -hmm. yeah totally yeah. agree um, Ali I know that you have an awesome story I heard that before um, about <laughs> your you had a debt uh, on the bank and you oh man uh, you mm -hmm. you killed it like <laughs> you're another lever now so i want to ask you about that yes um wow um, this brings me back <laughs> uh, i really want to forget those dark times but um of course i always want to share my story here you know, it can help others to you know others who are experiencing the same to get through it um, okay so basically 2019 it's you know it's not our year let's just say it's it like that year. 2019 <laughs> 2020 i guess um uh, so let's just say like um like we got in in the debt like for almost like ten thousand dollars and there's a couple of reasons from that like um people like screwing us over like there's this one that ran away with our money oh and, okay you know, sorry, I, I sorry i'm to, cutting you off mm -hmm. um just want to say that ten thousand dollars you are in Philippines, so it's completely different from the <laughs> US, right? <laughs> it's exactly because people from US from the US are gonna think like ten K, oh, okay, that's you know, that's manageable, but I think it's a completely different thing when you're in Philippines, right? Mm -hmm. It is, it is. Um actually ten K in the Philippines you're like half a millionaire already, so that's a lot oh, of money. Wow, okay. Yeah, it is. And so, yeah, I won't go into details on what else like that lead us to, to, the, to that debt, but um, those are really the dark times of our lives. And, you know, but looking back at it, then I'm still grateful that happened to us because we, without experiencing those dark times, we won't be able to find the future. So the future 
uh, which Chris Do is the owner of the company. Um, he's, he's, he's our mentor, you uh, and Rowena too. So the Future Pro, um, we took the risk and invested on that. And, you know, not we don't know what we're going to get inside of those, but we still want to, to be in there because, um, you know, you know, Chris and the future, they have so many YouTube videos like for free, right? And by watching those, uh, they gain our trust, me and Rowena. And we also learn a lot of things from him. And so that's why we took a risk. We entered the pro group and oh boy, when I joined, like everyone like kind of like welcomed me, like very warm, you know, I'm basically like a new a new person there. Like they have no reason to kind of like, you know, uh, I don't know, like accommodate me or, you know, but they all just really are an all. Basically, it's an awesome community. It helped me and Rowena grow to where we are right now, especially Chris, though, you know, gu guiding us with his knowledge. We're so very grateful for him and the community. Oh man, the community. I really love the community because, um, you know, like you, Chris, um, and also other people um, from the Future Pro Group, you know, oh man, they, I, I don't know where to start, but you know, um, they have each person has a contribution to to where we are right now. Like without them, like even one of them, I don't think we'll be here right now. Right? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I also yeah. went in the pro group uh, without knowing what to expect. <laughs> mm -hmm. And honestly, I didn't thought um, I thought about different things. I didn't thought about the people, and that was the most important thing, actually. Like the people that I met in the, that I met mm. in there was the, the most important piece of everything. So yeah. Oh yeah, definitely right. It's not you know like uh, the I would say like I would take the people that I meet in there compared to the money that uh, I got earned from being in the network. There. I truly value the relationship relationships that we've made in the pro group and you know the f um the more relationships that we'll also be creating for the future right mm -hmm. and you know um for the people who are in the creative industry or uh, experiencing the same experience that we had before i would like highly recommend them to join the pro group because um there's so many opportunities out there as long as um, you really do the work yourselves too. You know, not just being passive on the side. You need to be out there, and I really highly, high, I highly recommend it. So after that, how much time did it take you to um, get out of debt? Not that long, actually. <laughs> yeah. Once, um, right? Yeah, it's only. It took me only like. So here, here's the thing that 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 like that haunted me for more than a year, right? But after I joined the pro group, like it took me like two to three months just to pay all of it, like at once. Wow. I can remember we can eat, we can sleep properly. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Yeah, and like we we like we really stop our you know meaning of living, mm -hmm. <laughs> the meaning of living because of that. <laughs> experience yep. i remember like our only goal was just to survive right mm -hmm. every day every day mm -hmm. that's our goal like okay what's for tomorrow what's uh, yeah um it's it's really you know bad for 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 a person if you have a debt or you know because it's, it's it, it, it it can it, it can affect your living every day, so it's really hard. Mm -hmm. But um, for the people who are watching this, I don't want them to take this the wrong way. Like, if they join the program, they will immediately you know get their paid debt. But yeah, it, it, it's not a like you know magic. It, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's I, not I'm um, guessing it's not. Only that you get into there, you you put in the work, and mm -hmm. true. exactly, yes, and true by connecting to amazing people like you, Chris. Um, we've gotten our network to kind of like explode. Like it's crazy because everyone wants to connect with us to without you know us being still the new ones, right? And from there, um, we've gotten a lot of opportunities, and 
you know, fast forward, we didn't even realize that we were able to pay like the whole thing for the debt, right? And for that, you know, um, we were really truly grateful for the community and to Christo for creating, you know, the pro group. Yeah. It's a very inspiring story, actually. And very empowering goes thank you very much. Uh, i love that you you were in debt and you um even without you you decided to invest on something <laughs> and yeah, it helped it you and paid off so that's awesome <laughs> mm -hmm. i remember um thinking back then like because um as of this uh, current moment right uh, it's 150 dollars per month mm -hmm. for the pro group right i remember back then like Oh, I'm in debt for like 10k. So what's 150 dollars, right? So I just went on with it, and oh, okay. wow, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. it's worth it, right? It's definitely yeah. worth it. That's awesome, man. That's great. <laughs> really happy that it worked for you. And now you you started uh, Stroke and Saves, and you finally getting towards your mission. Um, you launched, um, uh, right now, I, I think last week, you launched a free online course about sell, uh, the blueprint. Um, so we've created a free online course, uh, named like, uh, the online course sales page blueprint. So this course, uh, it teaches, um, creators on how, or what's the key components they need to to include on their sales pages when they launch their online course. Because um, I noticed like a lot of um, creators that I've reached out to, um, they know how to create course, right? They love how to, they love to create content to teach, but they don't really have that much experience, you know, working on, you know, websites, right? So they don't know what it is that they need to communicate in there or what are the things that they need to include in there to basically show the value or convince not convince but pursue the their ideal students to enroll into their online course so me and rowena created this online free online course to help them you know um the reason we created this is to give back to the community because we love online education so much and you know i always tell to the people that i've talked to like me and rowena we won't get the skills that we have now if it's not for, mm. you know, online courses. Mm. So you're giving back. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> it's also an important lesson, uh, actually, important course because, yeah, you have created your course, but then you don't know how to um, um, state what you're trying to sell. So doing mm -hmm. that correctly, it's very important. It's the first thing that someone will see. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, you know, no, again, no matter how good your online course is, if you can communicate it to the people, you know, uh, to your ideal student, then no one will in enroll wi within it. True. Yeah. I will have also the link for the online course in the description for everyone that wants to check it out. Um, please do. Um, please do. <laughs> What should people um, consider before contact contacting you? I would say uh, they can just like reach out to us on our website, like strokesandshapes.com and they can schedule a call with us. And, you know, even if just like saying hello, sure, yeah, you're welcome to do that. And I would love to talk to you, especially if you're interested in creating your own online courses or knowledge product. Um, I'm happy to hop on a call with you and Know, at least help you move forward um, in pursuing it yeah we'll have all the links in the description for your social media and website so mm -hmm. i guess the website is the best way to connect you talk with you mm -hmm. yes and also in our social media since rowena is always online in there so you can <laughs> easily reach out to her yeah okay. me 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 which one <laughs> so she, um instagram <laughs> Facebook, where? Instagram. Uh, Instagram, yeah. okay. It's uh, Rowena Creates. Awesome. <laughs> Again, the links <laughs> will be in the description. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now that you are, you said three out of 10, you're moving on. Uh, what's what's the biggest challenge right now? Mm -hmm. um, would you say like individually or as partners? Yeah, in general, like, what's the biggest uh, challenge for Stroke and Sapes to move on? And what's the biggest challenge, mm -hmm. you know, for each one of you? Okay, um, I'll go first for 
strokes and shapes i think uh, the biggest challenge right now is getting out there like um uh bringing more awareness to to strokes and shapes i think that's our biggest challenge right now but we have already like um, a structure or, or a plan on our next steps on how we're able to connect to more people like you chris right and your audience too and to help more um, educators in pursuing their uh, passion for teaching others so i would say that's the biggest challenge for strokes and shapes um personally for me um my biggest challenge i i, I really don't know because i i feel very good actually chris you know because everything is connecting making sense you know like oh i know what's the next step that we need to take so you know when you ask me like what's my biggest challenge probably you know stopping myself from moving forward i don't know um you know i'm really like feeling confident and feeling very good so i really don't know how to answer that you know in my personal side yeah, of things yeah that's awesome man <laughs> <laughs> i i mean you you just got past your biggest challenge through the last year now <laughs> you you can do anything mm -hmm. now <laughs> yeah that's actually very true and but um uh, i i do hope like people don't get me wrong like i didn't uh, get past that challenge alone right uh, it's me rowena and you know like you chris you know, for supporting us as well you know a lot of people are having our backs you know supporting us and that's why we were able to overcome this big challenge and if you're someone who's experiencing you don't have to you know do it alone right you can have the support of other people and you know i would say you know reach out to to them awesome. let's just do it alone that's awesome okay. it's a teamwork and you Rana, what's your biggest challenge um honestly my biggest challenge is content creation for strokes and shapes because currently we are just the two, you know, person working with strokes and shapes. So it's my biggest challenge because I need to produce every day and with a lot of distractions because I'm a person who easily get distracted. <laughs> so yeah, it's hard for me to, you know, uh, produce uh, content in, you know, with so much in my background or something like that so content creation is the biggest challenge for me for strokes and shapes for our personal branding for um ali's ig for for my ig you know uh, yeah and personal biggest challenge is distraction <laughs> how to avoid distraction i'm just a human <laughs> Yeah, and I, I'm i not a calm, calm person. <laughs> I'm, you know, I, I love to go around and mm -hmm. yeah. You see shiny things and you <laughs> jump yeah. to the next one. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I also, I think it's one of my challenges also to create content because for me, it's a little bit boring to be honest. <laughs> like I, I love to create, but when it comes to, you know, I need to create something to post it. I'm like, oh man, I don't want to do that. Um, but mm. about distraction, I think, do you read books? Uh, Self-improvement books? Yeah. <laughs> Great. Ah. This, this is what I'm reading right now. And <laughs> I, I, I'm still, you know, <laughs> Awesome. So I've got a book for you, if you want to take it out. It's oh, sure. One. What's that? War of Art. Okay. It's the War of Art, Very not true. the Art of War. It's the opposite. Mm -hmm. And it's about procrastination and about how we we spend more time, you know, trying to fight the the resistance of working instead of working. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's very helpful. So a lot of people told me before reading it that they changed their life. So check it out. Maybe it helps. Again, I will have the link in the description. For sure. so. For everyone that wants to take it out. <laughs> yeah. We are uh, almost in the end. And one last thing I do for every podcast is ask in the end three random fast questions. So you can answer like the first thing that mm -hmm. pops in your mind. And then you can expand okay. on that and talk more about it. Um, 
I haven't done that with two people, so you know, each one can you know jump in and say uh, what's what's the best answer for them, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So first question is, uh, which is the best Philippine street food? I should try. <gasps> um, <laughs> so many. Uh, I would say. Mm -hmm. You go um, first. Uh -huh. no, so no. many options. Seafood, <laughs> seafood, seafood. Crabs, <laughs> Wait. crabs. Oh, crabs. But he said street food, right? Yeah, I meant like, you know, I'm in the Philippines, I'm working around, I'm walking. Which is the, f yeah. the best thing I should, you know, eat? <laughs> I, I would say for me, like barbecue, right? Pork mm. barbecue. Mm. Yeah. yeah um... Is it normally like uh, pork? Uh, yeah, in, in, in a stick and then you uh, oh, cook okay. it in like, what's the English of that? Uh, in coals? Yeah, we grilled? have a similar oh, yeah, thing grilled. here. Mm -hmm. uh, grilled. Mm. Yeah, like a wooden stick that you put uh, through small pieces of yes. uh, meat and you put it on the fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have we have a similar thing here. I, I'm guessing it's from the east, so we get, you know, <laughs> we borrow it from there. <laughs> and Renato, uh, you, uh, you said uh, crabs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, crabs. awesome. I love crabs. <laughs> like uh, uh, seafood love, and... Yeah, because every Sunday, Filipinos love bootle fight. So like you're eating with your hands. Okay, awesome. With families and there's a lot of seafood in front of you. Yeah. Garnish. Can't wait to, to visit Philippines now to, <laughs> to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Come, come, come here. <laughs> visit, visit. <laughs> Hopefully, after uh, the pandemic, I will be able to travel around Asia, and you know, yes, I want to do that. Please. So <laughs> maybe I'll meet you, you know, from person. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, that would be awesome. Sure. <laughs> I'm gonna go to the second question, uh, which is: I want you to tell me a random thing that you're very good at. Random thing that I'm very good at is playing computer games mm. <laughs> i'm very mm. proud of that mm. <laughs> <laughs> i guess someone don't want you to play a lot of video games <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> how about you rowena cooking cooking awesome mm. Mm. she is she is cooking. what's the, your best dish your favorite Barbecue. Uh, no, Ali. Ali, what is your uh, favorite dish that I cook for you? So many. <laughs> <laughs> no, she because she usually cooks for us and mm -hmm. every Sunday. Yes, every Sunday. Oh, okay. That's my. Yeah. That's my. Um, I think that's my. Uh, you know, giving back uh, to Ali to his to his mom every Sunday. So I'm cooking for for them. Mm. Yeah, we're awesome. very lucky with, for, for her cooking. It is very delicious. So, you know, Chris, when you go back, when you go in here, oh man, let's have Rowena cook for, for you. For <laughs> sure. uh, in addition for that, before our first business is barbecue, mm. uh, Ginali's barbecue. So we built we build it, but um, unfortunately we stopped because mm -hmm. um, I work in corporate. So, <laughs> I yeah, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. it because it's difficult to maintain, especially we don't have that much of manpower to mm. help us. Mm -hmm. oh, I but see. yeah, um, you know, her barbecue, like the secret recipe. Wow, I highly <laughs> recommend it. <laughs> oh, there's yeah, I would recipe. say that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I would say that's that's the most that I really like from her cooking. So I think that's the answer, right? Barbecue again. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And Ali, what's your favorite game? Oh my gosh, favorite game is so many, so many. What games, are you playing right, right now? <laughs> Which one? Currently, right now, um, I'm playing. Uh, it's called like Ori and the Blind Forest. Oh, Ori, yeah. Sure. Oh man, yeah. I love the the neon, like you know, the lights, the yeah, the effects. I'm playing the first one because I also want to play the second one because that's the, the most recent one, and mm -hmm. I want to follow the story and. You know, um, graphically, it's so awesome, and the music is so awesome, and the story is like 
very good. So if you're a gamer like me, I highly recommend. Great. I have. A, I didn't play it yet, but I have again a friend that recommended that game, so I need to try it. <laughs> the last question is: What is an underestimated skill that everyone should learn? Okay, I think I know what's the answer for me on that question. I would say the listening part. Right. Uh, sometimes uh, we take that for granted, and you know we. Uh, we just keep talking and talking and sometimes we, we just need to stop and listen to someone and you know some i would say that's the most underestimated skill right that's the question right yeah i love uh, it that's man. for me that's an awesome answer <laughs> and Rowena? for me communication mm -hmm. it's important i realized during this pandemic communication skills is important um, you know, intentional, intentional communication. So, yeah, it's important, you know, to have that skills because, I don't know, I, I just realized that I'm not good in intentional communication. So, right now, I realize, oh, it's really important during this pandemic, especially, that's what I realized. Mm -hmm. You, by communicating, you can help you know, other people, checking them, you know, being intentional. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Both questions were awesome. Um, anything else you want to tell me that I didn't ask you? Any tips you want to give the audience? Um, okay, so I'll go first for that uh, because I've, there's so many people that I know that really want to start their online education business. Like, for example, creating an online course or perhaps um, start coaching others, right? But they kind of like having struggled doing the first step, you know, getting out there, right? Or just doing it, right? So um, as for me, I, I, I know what you're, you've, you're feeling or what you're experiencing because I've also experienced that. Um, and, you know, what I would say is just do it, you know, take the first step. And, you know, like any other skills out there, the, um, the, the first uh, the first things will be hard, right? I mean, that goes the same for all other skills that we have, right? And as time goes by, you know, we just get better. And you, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have the perfect camera and the perfect audio, the perfect accent, you know. I mean, look at me. I'm not um, speaking English fluently but I still went for it because, um, again, my love and passion for online education. And I know that you who also want to do that, um, who wants to create content, who wants to help others, who wants to teach others, um, you know, I would just say, you know, just go for it. Just go for it. Don't overthink too much, I would say. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And you, Rana? How about you, Rana? Okay, I wrote this down. Um, this is for other people. Asking for help doesn't mean you're weak. So that's my word for, for today. And I realized during this pandemic, asking for a help doesn't mean you're weak. You don't need to be alone on your journey. You don't need to be an island. No man is an island. So, you know, you just need to ask for a help for someone. And there's always a someone who wants to help you with your journey so don't always don't think that you're alone always you know be open be open for um for opportunity always be open for other people's you know advice or suggestions but at the end of the day uh it's your you know it's your call but don't think that asking help that you know means you're weak that's awesome. Beautiful, Rana. Thank you. I think that it's the best way to to close the podcast. So great. Thank you for being my guests. Thank you so much as well for inviting us. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you very much. And, you know, Chris, we're very grateful um, to be a guest on your podcast. And, you know, we had fun. Uh, it's, it's so fun to talk with you about these things. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, guys. <laughs> 
hope to see you Thank soon you. again on the podcast maybe i'll bring you back at some point whenever you want to jump in um mm-hmm. feel free to message me and yeah thank you for being here <laughs> thank, thank you, you so much chris Thank you.